Well, hey friends, what's happening? In August of 2020, I made a video about gold prospecting with drones. And since that time, there's been a lot of really cool changes that have happened in the drone industry. So let's talk about that. And one of them is, as you remember, there are two types of drone pilots. One is recreational and one is part 107. And part 107 means you have the ability to earn revenue or make money commercially with your drone, be that putting videos on YouTube, working for a mining company, filming for a real estate company, working in the forestry industry, whatever it might be. So I'm both, I'm a, I'm a recreational pilot and I have a part 107. So I can go have fun and fly my drone or I can go film and sell the footage that I do. Doesn't really matter. So one of the really cool changes is when you, when I went and got my you know FAA certification years ago for being a part 107 pilot, you, know, you had to go to an FAA office, you had to go inside a building and take a test and go through the whole process, which wasn't bad. It was actually a lot of fun. The people were super friendly. But they've made the recurrent test online. And I'm usually not a big fan of government websites, but it actually did it really nicely and they did it really cool. They give you some test prep and it's actually intelligent test prep. And the test is really easy to take online. It's well thought out. I was actually surprised. You know, give the FAA a thumbs up on that one. Did a pretty good job. And so as far as, you know, prospecting on a recreational level with a drone, not much has changed. There are a lot of mining companies using them and individuals using them under Part 107 for different things. But as a recreational prospector, one of the big things that stops you from staying in uh, compliance with the regulations is people want to fly beyond visual line of sight. They want to go over the hill and film to see if they think it's worth going over there. The FAA regulations don't allow you to do that, whether you're a recreational pilot or a Part 107 pilot. Now you can apply for a waiver. The chance of you getting that waiver is really, really low and it's probably very, very expensive. So 99% of recreational prospectors, probably 100% are never going to go and apply for and be granted a beyond visual line of sight waiver. It's just probably not going to happen. So you have to keep your drone within the visual line of sight. And what does that actually mean? Well, it means different things. And you need to check with your drone attorney on this. In my opinion, what it means is you have to be able to see it the entire time. You can't see it on a camera and use a screen and go, oh, I can still see it. And you can't string together a line of visual observers. They're like, oh, we can still see it in walkie-talkies. It doesn't work that way. So you have to be able to physically see your drone. And the most you can use is a corrective lens. So that's a contact or a pair of glasses or whatever. So you have to be able to see that drone physically from where you are standing. And I mean, that's really kind of good. The other cool thing is they cha made some changes to the night regulations. But what does this really mean for you as a prospector? Again, you're not going to fly it over a hill and see what's on the other side. For a prospector, the drone is still a flying camera. That's all it is. Even if you have aspirations of mounting a metal detector on it or doing something, there's a lot of challenges to that. There's engineering challenges, safety challenges. There's probably even some regulation challenges. But I mean, just think about it. You mount something on, you have to have a big enough drone, number one, to do that, to even attempt to accomplish it. Then you would have to engineer it to where it wouldn't adversely affect the center of gravity. And at the same time, not affecting the center of gravity, you'd have to put it through a series of safety tests and maneuvers and all kinds of stuff. So that's just not realistic at this point in time. Maybe in the future, maybe in the future, there'll be something really cool. Maybe Elon Musk or someone will, will come out and invent something that can fly over with a sensor that's not even a detector we can think of and find nuggets for you. But it ain't happening today. Today, the most juice you're going to have for it is to make your videos look cool, maybe, or share with family and friends and just have fun. It, it's really not a good tool to go out and go prospect. You can get cool pictures of mines, cool pictures of trees and plants and blah, 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 whatever. But it's not going to help you find gold. Boots and eyes on the ground, always the number one way. You're not, you know, so many people are tempted by these drones that fly five, eight miles away. I'll get one, I'll fly way out there and see that. Well, not if you want to stay within the regulations, you won't. So there is that. And there's some other things that have changed too. So if you are a current pilot and you're thinking about taking the recurrent test, 
in my opinion, it was quite easy as long as you're staying up on the regulations. And, you know, if you're thinking about getting a part 107, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's truly a lot of fun to go through and learn. I, I learned a ton becoming, you know, a part 107 pilot. My wife actually has her, you know, plane pilot's license. And so I learned a lot from her. She was in the Air Force, then she got out, she became a private pilot. So I, I learned a ton from her. So there's a lot of learning, and learning is fun. So anyway, as far as prospecting goes, it's still a flying camera, guys. I'll catch you later.